25% of dog attacks fatalities were changed dogs. Uh, prohibition of dog fighting, encouraging spaying or spaying and neutering, and educational programs that teach pet selection, care, and bite prevention, as my team also mentioned. That is all for me right now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brittany King. I work at 5317 West 76th Street in Prairie Village. I'm somewhat relieved I can knock out about 90% of my speech because I'm not going to be repetitive. Okay. What I do want to say is people fear what they don't know. Okay. I can provide thousands of articles and studies and academic information to you guys on why banning certain types of dogs because of their appearance is unreliable and out of date. But you have to personally interact with these dogs and spend time with them for your view to change. It's very unlikely for it to change by just giving you all this, this data that you've been provided. I have interacted with these dogs. I've spent time with them. I've trained them. I found them homes. And I think it's important that um, you recognize the people that are here that are for repealing this ban are the ones that spend the time with these animals and they know them on a personal basis. Good evening. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, this evening. My name is Paul Cameron. I'm a been a resident of Prairie Village for over 30 years. I live at 4921 West 72nd Street. Um, much like the earlier resident, I don't have statistics and I'm not an expert on dogs, but um, I want to talk from personal experience. Um, my wife and I worked at Jack Russell Terrier Rescue for over 10 years, um, and I will say that most of the quote unquote problem dogs that we had were more people problems than dog problems. It really came down to the training or treatment of the dogs more than it did to the dogs themselves or even their breeds. Well, for the last few years, we've been volunteering at Great Plains SPCA. Um, and I'll admit, when we first went up there to volunteer, we were very concerned about interacting with pit bulls because of all that we've seen in the media, uh, whether it was in print or in television, all the things that you hear, the stories of attacks and all that. We were really leery of actually interacting with the pit bull or bully breed dogs at the shelter. We quickly learned that was very unfounded. As we became experienced with the dogs, interacted with them, we learned they're just as lovable, loyal, and loving as any other breed. Um, we really came to appreciate them with all our interactions over the last few years. Uh, one personal story we had up here, um, a deaf foot for Pitbull uh, named Rami. Sorry. Uh, we had a deaf Jack Russell Terrier for 17 years. Um, and when Rami came to the shelter, um, obviously it was too difficult to adopt. Um, but we took the time, worked with him, taught him a number of commands. Um, he was in the shelter for a long time, so it was a difficult dog to adopt. Um, during that time, you know, we couldn't take him in and foster him, couldn't bring him to our house, you know, for an outing because they live in Prairie Village, but would have likely done that. Uh, he was, sorry, he is pretty much a big goofy puppy. Um, eager to learn, eager to please. Uh, we worked with him, taught him some basic commands, um, and got him ready to go to the new home. He was in the show for a long time. Uh, but finally he found a good home, not in Prairie Village, obviously. Um, but, you know, he really deserved a chance to find a good home that he stayed. Um, and I would really, you know, as a resident, encourage you to, to rethink this uh, and remove the, uh, the breed-specific legislation. Thank you. Six months of living in Prairie Village, animal control came to my home 
about a dozen times. They came on with hordes every time of me having a pit bull in my home. One time they actually came in and searched my home, including my attic, to make sure I wasn't hiding the pitbull. My dog never once caused trouble, nor was I ever sighted. Our neighbor at the time was a Gray Village police officer who is actually currently here tonight. We shared a fence. My dog and his, bo his dog, his boxer, would run our fence line playing together. Every time animal control came to my house, they cleared me, they cleared my dog, loved on her, and went on their way. One time, a male um, animal control officer who was at my home had his hand all bandaged up, and he told me, it is not the pit bulls you have to worry about, it's those darn Jack Russells. <laughs> I know part of the arguments made is that there wasn't a lot of manpower used in pit bulls in your city because it's not an issue. Well, I can tell you from my personal experience that isn't true. After six months of harassment and non-stop drop-ins, we decided to move our family out of your city. Because it was damn, we loved our home so that we could keep our dog and not be harassed and live in peace. We didn't want to worry anymore that our dogs would be taken away for looking like a pit bull. Designating a dog dangerous because of its breed diminishes the responsibility of all dog owners to train and socialize their companions. Their classification is subjective and non-scientific. They prevent people from living in Prairie Village because of the way a dog looks, including my family. It doesn't make it safer. This ban keeps more than these dogs from the city. It keeps me and families like me from joining the community. I now live outside the city limits in Spring Hill, Kansas. My husband and I have since rescued a deaf pit bull named, deaf, deaf bull named Ronnie. I can tell you as a mother of a two-year-old the safety is my biggest concern. You may have some of you seen my son and being reading to my pit bull and another, my other dog, the other dog is the dog that I've moved out of the city because of. My pit bull Ronnie is the most docile and gentle dog I have ever had. He is the best dog out of all five of my dogs with my toddler. So as a previous citizen of your city and a now pit bull owner, I ask you to consider repealing your free specific legislation. My name is Emily Austin. I live at 2706 West 76th Street in Prairie Village, and I've been a Prairie Village resident for three years. I feel really lucky to live in a city that is consistently ranked among the top on lists of the safest cities in America or the best cities to live or raise a family. And because we're such a strong and close-knit city, we're afforded the unique opportunity to educate the members of our community on responsible dog ownership and interaction in an equally positive and effectual way. Effective dangerous dog laws take multiple factors into account, including socialization, <coughs> training, medical and behavioral health, and quality of ownership and supervision, just to name a few. Our current laws account for one, breed. But because of the amount of behavioral variability within each breed, it's impossible to reliably predict a dog's behavior based solely on their pedigree, or in some cases, lack thereof. In order for our dangerous dog laws to be effective, we must move from identifying dogs by breed and instead identify each dog as an individual. I ask for the council to consider breed-neutral dangerous dog laws that target irresponsible owners and promote proper and humane control and care of dogs. Anti-chaining and proper leash laws ownership restrictions on previous offenders, enforcement of animal, animal cruelty laws, and educating the public on how to correctly interact with neighborhood dogs will make our city safer without the need for antiquated and ineffective breed-specific bans. I hope that we as a city and a community will join the American Bar Association, the National Animal Control Association, the American Veterinary Medical Association, the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior, the U.S. Department of Justice and even the White House, who issued an official statement in August of 2013 against breed discrimination, deeming it ineffective and a waste of public resources. I hope that we join them in putting an end to breed-specific legislation within our community. And I'm going to go a little off script here and say, I am the owner of a dog that was nearly deemed aggressive by the city. You guys might recognize me. Um, he's not. He's obviously not a pit bull. He's a gentle giant, a 
St. Bernard. I'd just like to reinforce the fact that breed has absolutely nothing to do with the temperament of the dog. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jennifer Collins. Somewhere they saw him leave what just didn't like it. Because you resemble, resemble someone who did a bad thing. Even though you yourself have never let me do that. Sorry. People automatically deem you as a person in a danger to the community even though they've never met you. Would, this like, would you find this acceptable? Well, that's exactly what Fred and Dylan is doing, having a DSL in place. Multiple studies done by the American Medi Veterinary Medical Association and other leading highly renowned experts in the field have proven that DSL and similar policies that prohibit animals based solely on their physical appearance do not reduce the number of bites and make public safety any greater. Trying to find a single solution to reduce dog bites, which are rare occurrences and are most likely due to humans' behavior or negligence, is exactly what Prairie Village is doing with the current DSL ordinance. You argue that our current breed ban, our current breed ordinance, is to keep dangerous dogs out of our community, but individual dog behaviors, temperaments, and history are never even taken into consideration. As a Prairie Village resident for the past four years, and a mother of a young child, that's your turn. <laughs> I too am concerned with public safety, but this makes absolutely no sense to me. Where's the campaign still to leave six paper? A dog's individual history and behavior are far more important than its breed or physical appearance. Relying on breed stereotypes will not keep anyone safer from a dog bite, any more than racial profiling will keep them safer from being a victim of a crime. Any dog can bite. It is not the breed that determines the risk of that happening. According to the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior, DSL is ineffective and can lead to false sense of community safety, as well as welfare concerns for dogs identified most often incorrectly, mind you, as belonging to specific breeds. Dog breed identification, especially a mixed breed dog, relies heavily on veterinarian or shelter staff opinion. And of all dogs in the U.S., 44% of dogs have their breed determined on their physical appearance alone. A recent study done in 2009 compared dogs in several shelters where breeds were solely determined on appearance. They performed DNA tests on them, and the results showed that 25% of the dogs matched the predominant breed that had been identified as by the shelter staff. Given there are hundreds of dog breeds, it's completely unreasonable to think vets, shelter employees, or animal control officers could visually identify a dog breed based solely on their appearance. Studies like this one have shown over and over again that dogs are quite often misidentified as pit bulls. As leaders of our community, our focus shouldn't be on specific breeds, but rather on educating people on prevention. You do this through educating yourself and teaching children about proper interactions and behaviors with dogs. Learn how to recognize dog signals that are scared, feel threatened, or is resource guarding to prevent a situation from escalating. The focus of our ordinance should be on strict enforcement of licensing, licensing leash laws, and dog owners' responsibility to provide humane care, custody, and control of their dog, regardless of the dog's breed or suspected breed. Thank you. Christian has a 45 minutes. I'd still like to give everybody time to talk, so we'll extend that a little bit. Um, if we can kind of push through and get to the point, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Ashley Flores, and I'm from Green Plains SPCA. First of all, I wanted to say good evening to Mayor and to members of the Council. I have had the pleasure of meeting several of you recently to discuss the importance of preventing dog bites and improving public safety in your community. My name is Ashley Flores once again, and I'm a CBET KA animal behaviorist possessing seven years of animal behavior training and behaviorally accessible for thousands of dogs. Prior 
to my certification, I have been, um, been working in shelter and industry for 14 years. I oversee the behavior programs at Great Plains SPCA. I want to commend each of you for opening the dialogue to eliminate three specific legislation. I am passionate about my strengthening, or passionate about strengthening the human animal bond through education and training. As an animal behaviorist, my primary objectives are to help owners understand their pets and just educate the public on animal handling, safety and orders to prevent dog bites, and to assess how residents' animals adoptions can receive through behavior assessments and behavior history. I want to offer my professional opinion on topics of this brief specific legislation. In my personal and professional experience, we have included, which includes um, hands-on training with thousands of animals, thousands of pit bulls, as well as scientific research regarding dog breeds. That pit bull type dogs do not have a higher propensity of aggressive behavior than any other breed. In fact, temperament tests have shown that um, it's the opposite to be true. The American Temperament Test Society graded American Pit Terriers with an 86.4% pass rate. That's higher than 121 other dog breeds, which include golden retrievers, beaters, beagles, and many other popular breeds. Great Plains SPCA maintains a 97% live release rate, and we do not select human euthanasia um, or animals who have behavior possessed um, for the rest of the public. Um, the biggest question that is asked me uh, when they're talking about the animals that we do euthanize is, is there any certain breed that you um, see that we euthanize for aggression issues than any other? And the answer is no. In fact, the correlations that I have found have been purely environmental and where that animal is from. And I keep very, I keep a lot of data on all the animals that we euthanize by breed, age, types of aggression, severity of problems with bites, um, and I, I do not see a correlation with that. Um, so, going forward, um, the pets in our care are treated individually based on individual behaviors regardless of their breed. It is my recommendation that the city of Prairie Village adopts breed neutral laws that will effectively address individual dogs' behaviors and hold reckless owners more accountable. I'm an advocate for dangerous dog laws, not breed specific laws. And Great Plains SPCA would be happy to help with constructing um, dangerous dog laws that are effective and will keep your community safe from endangered animals. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Beth Ann Steinbacher. I live at 5415 West 71st Terrace. I've been a Prairie Village resident for 12 years. I'm here to talk to you tonight about two of the most pervasive myths about the group of dogs known as pit bulls. The supposed locking jaw and the strength of their bite. Physiologically, a pit bull's jaw is no different than any other dog's jaw. <coughs> pit bulls do not have anything in the anatomy of their jaw that allows the jaw to lock nor is there any hormone, chemical, or enzyme secreted or created by a pit bull that allows them to lock their jaw. Put simply, a pit bull's jaw does not lock. The second myth is the force of a pit bull's bite. It is often referred to as one of the strongest of any dog breed. It was once stated by a veterinarian at a veterinary conference that a pit bull's bite measures 2,000 PSI. To put this in perspective, a crocodile has a bite of 2,500 PSI. The speaker had no supporting research for this statement. It is statements like these that demonize this breed. In 2005, Dr. Brady Barr of National Geographic performed a bite force study on three breeds of dogs, Rottweiler, German Shepherd, and American Football Terrier. This is one of the breeds that falls under BSL here in Prairie Village. Dr. Barr used a digital bite meter or bite speed to measure the force of each dog's bite. The Rottweiler's bite came in first place with 328 PSI. The German Shepherd was next with 238 PSI. The American Pit Bull's bite was 235 PSI. I respectfully ask the council to repeal BSL. It does not protect the citizens of Prairie Village and gives a false sense of security against dangerous dogs in general. The Pit Bull deserves more than to be judged by its locking head and bad reputation. We all know judging and generalizing is not the right thing to do. If we judge animals by appearance and not by facts, who would know a hyena has a stronger bite than a lion? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Erica Carper, and I live at 7210 Springfield. 
And um, I bought my house in 2008, and I got a dog in 2009. And starting beginning of 2012, I became involved with an organization whose mission is to relieve pain and suffering for animals in the impoverished areas of KCMO. So on Sundays, since 2012, almost without fail, I spend my days, um, we travel from anywhere from my prospect in Independence Avenue up in the Northeast, down to Gregory, all along the 71 corridor. It's very different than Prairie Village. Um, most of the dogs, almost without fail, like what I'm doing is I'm helping and finding the ones we don't know about, dogs that are kept on chains 24 seven in the backyard. Um, most of those are pit bulls and pit bull mixes. Although you name a dog, and I know that I've seen it on the chain in somebody's backyard. Um, those dogs should be, those dogs should hate me, and they should hate all humans, and they don't. And the majority of them are pit bulls. We also bring the one, we bring when there's a lot of instability, and there's a lot of abandonment, and there's sometimes the neglect is so cruel that animal control will, will pick them up, and we take them in, we pull them from the shelter and take them into the program. So again, most of those are pit bulls. Um, it's amazing how many sweet animals we have. And I've seen, I can name lots of instances, two dogs, same litter, living in the same sh hell hole, and one of them, fine, loves me. The other one, I can't get near. You know, you pull them both off of the chain. That dog you wanted to kill me yesterday on the ch on on the chain. Two days later, now he wants to love me. Don't get me wrong. We have our fair share of aggressive dogs, um, but it has nothing. I can tell you one thing. It has nothing to do with breed, and I don't think it has. It's not all breed, and it's not all environment either. Um, if I didn't believe this, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't do what I do. My Sundays are very difficult, very frustrating. I wouldn't do what I do, and I certainly won't be here. Um, if I didn't want it, you know, in my neighborhood. It's just, it's asinine. I, I feel ridiculous telling people, if, you know, I feel, I feel kind of, I feel ashamed. Um, and I love where I live, and I love Prairie Village, and you know, I don't want to have to have that gap, but, so, I have, am confident that a more suitable solution can be reached. Hi, my name is Monica Matthews. I'm a doctor of veterinary medicine. I graduated in 2009 from Kansas State University. Um, I am here tonight. Um, I wanted to give you a brief background about my experience with pit bulls. I started owning pit bulls at the age of 16 years old when I was in high school. Um, I've continued to own, foster, and advocate for this breed for the last 19, almost 20 years. Um, I've owned this breed, like I said, consistently throughout that time. Before owning the breed, I heard all of the all of the stories about how this breed will turn on you, this breed is, you know, can't be trusted. Um, 19 years later, I've not found that to be true. I have extensive experience, not only with my own dogs and how they behave in my household and with, you know, outside of my household, but I also have extensive experience with private practice, seeing these breeds in private practice also working in shelter environments. Um, I work, if we're going to uh, vet school, I worked at the Lawrence Humane Society for a number of years in the isolation unit, which is strictly pit bulls. Um, so I was able to see my fair share of pit bulls being euthanized on a weekly basis for no other reason strictly than the way that these dogs look. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into what the other two veterinarians were talked about. Um, I don't agree with um, what they said completely. I did want to bring up, however, that um, there was a study conducted by the American Veterinary Medical Association. This study spanned 20 years, from 1978 to 1998. It was published in JASMA, the Journal of American Veterinary Medical Association, in 2000. And this study was regarding dog bite fatality. The finding of this study has been so misconstrued that the AVMA found it necessary to publish an additional statement regarding this study. And I quote, in contrast to what has been reported in the news media, the data contained within this report cannot be used to infer any breed-specific risk for bite dog 
for a dog bite type fatality. Neither pit bull type dogs nor Rottweilers can be said to be more dangerous than any other breed based on the contents of this report. To obtain such information, it would be necessary to know the number of each breed currently residing in the United States. In the United States, such information is not available. End quote. So basically, the American Veterinary Med Medical Association, the veterinarians that work with these animals every day, are telling you that there is no evidence to support this. And I believe that a lot of these bans were passed um, without scientific evidence to support those findings. Um, I, once again, love the breed. I've owned them for 19 years. I have extensive experience with them. I would love to go into detail about any questions you guys might have about my experience raising them or working with these dogs. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with dogs that have come from good homes that have been confiscated due to where the, the owners live. I've also had the pleasure of working with dogs that have been involved in dog fighting rings and seeing how those dogs can progress with a little bit of TLC. So thank you for your time. I hope tonight we can repeal the PSL. And if you have any questions for me, I would love to answer them for you right now. Hi. I'm here on uh, Louis Brinkley, and uh, I'm here because I was raised by German Shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> My dad always had a German Shepherd in the house, and in fact, if one got run over or sick or just got too old, he'd get another one. I mean, he just, it was, uh, it was always that way. And uh, these dogs were the most loving, and, and, and I, I mentioned German Shepherds, I know we're talking about pit bulls and such, but uh, the feared dog before pit bulls was the German Shepherds or the uh, um, Belgian. Sure. Yeah. Can you state your name? Yeah. I'm sorry, Joe Clifner, uh, 8040 Pawnee, Great Village, Kansas. Um, I just wanted to say that these are the dearest um, animals, uh, and, uh, and all animals. Um, as many people have said, but I just wanted to reiterate, um, uh, animals are uh, um, taught. Uh, how you treat an animal, of course, is how that animal is going to react. That animal is used to love, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly no expert on it, but I've, I've had many a German Shepherd and uh, even uh, even a, a couple of um, wilder dogs. Uh, uh, which I won't mention. So they were all beautiful dogs and uh, trained correctly by their owners, and uh, there was no reason uh, to fear them. And uh, I understand, I, I, I even had a friend in Columbia, Missouri, who trained Schutzen dogs, which I think the police force around here would be familiar with. And, uh, and, um, and, and he would train them and, and send them to law enforcement to be uh, um, further trained. And, used by law enforcement. And this dog, uh, these dogs, you know, the, the same Schutzen that he's trained to take an arm, uh, some, some bandit's arm off uh, or somebody's gun off uh, uh, in their hand, uh, uh, he'd jump on my shoulders with his paws and he'd lick me and all that. I mean, dogs, uh, in short, they're, they're, they're uh, They're, they're learned, you know, they, they learn from how they're trained and, and how they're loved and how they are in their home. That's simply it, so thank you. So can I just tell you how awesome and excited I is on Move? Oh. <laughs> it's, it's really nice, so I just wanted to throw that out there right now. Uh, my name is Mary Morgan. I live at 2400 West 75th Place. I have lived here um, for nine years now. Um, you might recognize my name from an email or two that I've sent. Um, but I, I am a registered nurse. Um, public safety is very, very important to me. Um, that's one of the reasons I chose to live in Great Village was that I knew that um, me and my family, who is me and my dogs and my 22-year-old cat, um, I knew we would be safe here. And I've seen a lot 
of people who move in and out of my neighborhood in the past nine years. I see the demographic changing. I want more of my friends to come here, the ones who actually have kids, who are gonna go to our schools and are gonna help keep making our community great like it is. And it breaks my heart because they won't come here. They can't bring their dog or they really want to be able to adopt a pit bull someday and they can't. And it, it, it's embarrassing to, to say, yeah, I know it's a great city and you know, we all, we're very neighborly, we love each other, except we just look at a dog to see if that makes them dangerous or not. Um, there is no evidence at all that supports DSL. Um, again, I provided you all with extensive literature as related to that. I'd also like to remind you when evaluating sources, please be sure to um, keep in mind the five R's. Um, I provided you that as well, but um, the biggest one here today is you need to look at the purpose of writing the article. It's writing the article because they're trying to find accurate scientific data or are they writing the article because they have some sort of ulterior motive? That is the number one thing to look at in all of the information that you've been given. If you do that, I'm confident that you will come to the correct decision to repeal DSL. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeff Collins. I live at 2222 West 77th Street. I believe that the BSL is uh, bogus. Um, I think it's a waste of city resources, and um, I think it's based on the factual data. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dan Thompson. I own Dog Paws, and I was not raised by Nervous Shepherds. <laughs> um, we have three locations, one right down the street, if I could recognize some of you guys' customers. Um, that's 79th and Lee Boulevard, and we have two locations in Missouri. Um, you know, I don't have anything I'm going to read off. I'm very factual and to the point. We've helped over 10,000 dogs in six years with not one injury from a pit bull. Zero. Um, can't say that about labs. Can't say that about some, some uh, German Shepherds, mix or anything, but you know what? Not one. So I encourage you guys to reach out to me at Dog Paws if you have any questions because we are a community community and this is what we do. We take care of dogs, and we've had zero, again, zero, with the cageless environment, zero injuries from a pit bull, so thank you. Good evening, my name's Emma Coleman, I live in United Solutions. I'm a former Park Village resident, my parents still live here in the city, uh, and I'm not really much of a gambler, but I guarantee you tonight that anybody in this room who has had uh, education in canine behavior and body language has no fear of a pit bull type dog. Uh, when people are not educated about safe dog handling practices, they are more likely to make decisions that result in an increased risk. Uh, for example, you might not know that when a dog yawns, flicks its tongue, turns its head, or freezes, that this is frequently an indication that the dog is experiencing stress or anxiety. When we misinterpret, disregard, or dismiss the communication signals that dogs constantly display, we ignorantly set ourselves up at a disadvantage. When stressed, overstimulated, under-socialized, and poorly trained dogs are placed in inappropriate situations with uneducated owners, everyone involved loses. Frequently, the biggest losers are the dogs and then, of course, children. Uh, when clients hire me to train their dogs, they often explain, uh, explain within the first appointment, wow, it's more like people training than dog training. Uh, and of course, I humbly agree. Over the past six years, I've worked with many dogs, including boxers, labs, shepherds, mixed breeds, who have been deemed dangerous by the animal control in their cities, such as Olathe, uh, cities that do not have breed bans. Not a single one of my cases has involved a pit bull type dog. Uh, in fact, when I was a child living here in this city, my family owned an aggressive dog, and she was not a pit bull. Uh, I myself have been bitten by Pomeranians, Labs, mixed breeds, and the family favorite, Golden Retrievers. Uh, never a pit bull, and never since I've become educated about canine behavior and body language. Uh, education is much, much cheaper and much, much more effective than enforcement. So tonight I place myself at your disposal and encourage you to repeal if you are agreed to specific legislation. Hi, my name is Steven Shubler. I live at 7765 Fontana. I've been a proud resident of Prairie Village for five years and I love living in Prairie Village. But there's one thing about living here that I think is a tarnishes our reputation and that is the breed specific legislation. 
Also, I work in healthcare as a human variety. You've heard from a lot of people working in veterinary medicine. However, I'm a clinical pharmacist at a large local hospital, and I spend a lot of my shifts working in our emergency department. And yes, unfortunately, we do see a lot of dog bites. However, in my in my recollection, and I do pay a lot of attention to the breeds because I've been involved in the animal rescue. Rarely, if ever, have I seen a dog bite that has been brought to the emergency room from a pit bull. More often than not, the bites that we see are from, as the previous speaker just mentioned, golden retrievers, labs, and even the mighty chihuahua. Uh, <laughs> uh, along, along with that, I'm the proud owner of two breeds that in the past have been considered dangerous and have been banned, as Kayla mentioned earlier, the, Rot the Rottweiler and the Alaskan Malamute. Um, however, I want to kind of offer a unique perspective to this, and that is that in my line of work, we see more injuries related to people driving vehicles. Yet when this meeting adjourns here, and hopefully in the next short while, we're all, gonna get, we're all gonna get in our vehicles and drive home and not give second thought to the fact that we could very well be injured. And that's because we trust the people behind the wheel. We trust ourselves, we trust the people that we're sharing the road with to drive properly and safely and follow the rules and regulations. And that same trust needs to be extended to dog owners. We do not need to, to prohibit specific breeds simply because of their breed. We need to, as others have said before me, enact, like, enact like, like regulations and legislation on the specific dog, not the breed. Uh, so with that, I would just encourage you guys to repeal the breed-specific legislation and take the approach of dangerous dog legislation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Billy Bayless. I live at 6004 West 79th Street. I've been here for about 20 years. First, I'd like to thank all of our law enforcement for taking good care of us and keeping us safe. Thank you very much. And I just ask that we repeal the law. I just would like to be able to have a couple. That's it. <laughs> good evening. My name is Allison Trotsky. I live at 4009 West 84th Street in Prairie Village. Um, everyone has already said what I came here to say, so I just want to tell a quick story that I'm a dog lover who used to be terrified of pit bulls. Um, my only experience was with a neighbor dog that looked very scary from the outside. Um, I started volunteering at a local rescue and I did not walk the pit bulls for a long time because of this fear. Um, I took a couple classes that were offered and like many people have said, it's all about education. Once I learned what pit bulls are about, how loyal they are, how friendly they are, to be able to walk into a kennel now of a pit bull that has been neglected or abused or just had not very good treatment with a human that probably looks a lot like me, and I can get in there and pet it and take it for a walk and receive the love that they want to give and want to show you is huge. Um, so please take into consideration that I'm killing this ban. Um, I love being a resident of Prairie Village, but I will be leaving if this ban stays in place um, because I would like to foster dogs and so many that need foster are technically classified as pit bulls. So thank you for your time. Good evening, members of the council, Ms. Mayor, and all law enforcement uh, officers. My name is Clay King. My wife spoke earlier. I apologize for my attire. Um, the, uh, I, I also live with her at 5317 West 17th. <laughs> <laughs> Along with our four-legged children. Um, I uh, would like to echo the things that I've already heard. I'm sure they've already been reinstated multiple times with most people here. Um, what made us fall in love with Prairie Village and choose Prairie Village when we moved here uh, was that it reminded me of my sm small town in Western Kansas. And I think some of the values that I take from that raising and the values that I see here are ownership and responsibility of those around you being children. I love the way that children are raised here in Prairie Village. I think that children are raised similarly to the way our pets are raised, and I hope that that's the way that our pets are raised as well. Uh, I think that uh, <coughs> banning a specific breed is short-sighted, and it, it just fosters the, this misconception of these breeds. Uh, I'm sure my wife spoke that it's it's hard to pick out what a pit bull is. It's easy to say, well, this dog uh, looks like a pit bull, so it must be a pit bull. Um, with our interactions with dogs, which are many, uh, I would say that I've had misconceptions as well of what uh, a breed is and, and what that entails. And what I would like to say is that we, uh, as Prairie Village citizens, uh, would find it a, a great 
uh, benefit and also uh, a big step forward for the city of Prairie Village to be able to lift this ban uh, and kind of open people's eyes to the Prairie Village, uh, which I've deemed one of the leaders in local government you know, in the Kansas City metro area. If we can do that, I think that it, it sends a strong message and I think it leads us as open-minded individuals uh, who want to educate ourselves on these dogs and also uh, kind of nullify the, the misconceptions that have been set forth in the previous, uh, in the past on these dogs. So I thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me come speak for a moment and I hope that uh, we repeal this ban. Hi, my name is Nancy Bunnell, my address is 500717 First Harris. Um, you're going to love me because um, I'm next to last and I'm really fast. Um, <laughs> I own four Fox Pet Sitters. I have been doing that full time for over 20 years. Um, and again, as other people have said, I've been bit by a Shih Tzu, uh, a cat, and a bird. <laughs> and the bird name was Sue Vicious, so that's <laughs> But I have never, um, I've taken care of pit bulls, and you've got to understand, I'm a little bit different. I'm walking into somebody's home where um, their family is not there. I'm putting my key in that door, I'm opening the door, and I'm meeting that pit bull. And I'm, I'm, I'm still here, I'm still here. <laughs> and nothing, nothing has happened. And um, again, it's the same thing as everybody else has said. It's got to be on a one-to-one -one basis, you know, the same way you pick your husbands and wives, you know? <laughs> So, thank you for your time. <laughs> Hi, am I last? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, my name is Stephanie Pugh. I live at 400 South West 4th Street in Lee Summit, Missouri. Um, I'm from County Kansas, though. It's been interesting being here tonight because I teach a class on the bully breeds uh, at two large area local shelters. And on a I think it was last Friday, I actually talked to 25 of our local female police officers, which was really cool. My class covers all kinds of stats that you guys have heard tonight, which has been awesome. Hearing a lot of people here have taken my class, and a lot of their stats I've, I have on the slides. So I left my presentation um, so that you guys can review it if you have any questions. But the only fact uh, that I have that nobody's mentioned is about one in 116,000 people will die from a dog bite. And one in 13,000 people will die from a hot dog. So, <laughs> have a good night. solve anything tonight. Um, so I'm going to adjourn the meeting this evening and then continue to do the whole discussion on the next council meeting.